Yo, what's up? This is going to be a short little video tutorial showing you how to map the Akai MPD32 MIDI controller to a Koala sampler. The Akai MIDI MPD32 is a uh, older MIDI controller that you can find on uh, eBay or you can also find them in uh, a music store, usually sold secondhand around 80 to up upwards to $300, depending on the condition of the unit. Um, they're of great value because I usually find, if you're lucky enough, you, you'll stumble upon quite a few uh, models of this controller on eBay selling between 80 to 150. And I like it because it has, it allows you to access four banks of pads and MIDI uh, operations on the controller. So uh, as far as the control banks, I, I, sh I should say it's only three banks. A, B, and C, but you can MIDI map depending on the controller, the the um, application. You can pretty map, uh, you can map out the majority of this controller to uh, the hardware. So to start off, we're gonna go into Koala Sampler, and we're gonna go to Map MIDI. Now I already have my my samples loaded in there just to, for demonstration purposes. I usually like to load up my percussionary pieces on the bottom row of the uh, controller or uh, unit that I'm using. And then I like to uh, load the melodic uh, pieces up on the top row. So to start off, uh, Koala Sampler does kind of the opposite. It loads the samples from top to bottom as opposed to bottom to top. So in order to mirror what the way I like to load my samples in with the preloaded samples that I have in there already, these are all percussionary piece, uh, pieces, that I believe. So I'm going to start with that pad right here, and I'm going to map it to the first pad right there. Second pad to the second pad, third pad to the third pad, fourth pad to the fourth pad, so on and so forth. And then I go to my second bank and I go to bank B on my on my Akai MPD32. Now the only issue that the it uh well one of the issues that the MPD32 does have is that the top row of the first bank will be the, the second the bottom row of the next bank. So you don't get a full six access to a full 16 pads for the uh, following banks and it's the same way for banks B, uh, B C and D uh, Unfortunately w when they MIDI mapped or created the values for the the controller they overlapped banks some, some kind of way So unfortunately, you're going to be losing the, uh, the the ability to trigger new samples on the bottom row of each bank that you go into you can still trigger samples, but it'll be the same exact samples from the previous page that are already mapped. So I'll point it out to you right now without mapping bank B. If I go to bank A, I have all my samples in there. If I go to bank B, I'm still able to trigger the same samples from the previous page it's okay. I'd rather be able to trigger new sample, new samples. I have a, a whole new bank of 16 samples, but unfortunately, that's one of the bugs that the MPD32 does have. And unfortunately, Akai discontinued making a MIDI mapper, uh, mid, discontinued the MIDI map software that would allow you to re, uh, to create a new uh, bank pad for each bank so that's one of the issues that it does have but it's, it's a it's a minor issue depending on how you look at it because i know most most people won't use the entire grid of banks but if you do it's just a fyi now another point that i do love about the mpd 32 that is that it does have three banks of 
controller mappings. So you can have, you can switch banks and still have access to something like the perform features, which has 16 parameters you can, can control. So you can switch from, you can have the first eight knobs controlling bank, uh, the top row, and the second bank you go to can be controlling the bottom row. So let's do that real fast for demonstration purposes. Now we'll go to bank control B. I can control those last eight of parameters. One thing I do like to do though for a parameter that starts in the middle, like the pitch and the filter and the vibraphone, I prefer those to be mapped to the uh, endless encoder, endless uh, encoder knobs at the bottom here, there, because they start in the middle. So that means if you have your fader all the way down on the controller, then it's turning it on and off. But if you have an endless control, if you have the pitch which starts in the middle, you can go left and right to control the pitch, up or down. Same thing with the filter, high pass, low pass, and the vibra phone, phone as well. So those three parameters I like to have these those mapped to the endless encoder knobs. You can also control the parameters of each sample from the endless controller knobs. And again, I like to have those mapped to the top row of my bank one thing I you do want to remember to do is make sure is that the right bank that you want to have it at right now I have a assigned a bank B and that was a total accident I wanted it to be on bank A but when we mapped our faders I kept it on bank B not thinking so we just go back and delete those there's an X up top and we'll go back to bank A and just remap them And you can even control like whether you want to delete a parameter or whatever. Like if you want to delete that, if you want to access the, the delete button, just assign it to one of these buttons down here. And now if you want to delete a sample, you have access to do that as well. Another feature you can map is the play, record, the tempo button via the MPD32. So we'll go back to MIDI mapping. Map those parameters. I want to have the play button set right there. The record button right there. That's a tempo button. Uh, I would uh, map that to an endless encoder. Right now, I don't think there's a way to control the tempo via an endless encoder. And then I'll just map that uh, metronome. And so the cool thing about it is you can tell that it's being initiated by the fact that it's on or off. Another feature that you can uh, access via the MPD32 is the ability to go into the keyboard mode via the MPD32, which I like too. Keep in mind that all these parameters are on, on control A, but if I want to go to another bank, you see they went off because I'm at, I'm at a different bank and they're set to a different control feature. So now I have the ability, if I wanted to, I can map them out to the different scenes. I really don't like uh, switching scenes via the controller. I feel like it's a little bit clunky and it's just not for me, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now, just for the sake of this tutorial video. So I believe that's all the control that I want to have right now. And so let's just check it out.
So right now, there's nothing being triggered in these rows because I didn't map out map out Bank B. But yeah, that's just a basic overview of all the features that you can use with the uh, MPD32. Let's just record a, a sequence real fast so I can show you how it works. So let's go to... So I already have a sequence loaded in there, didn't realize. But let's record it into a new sequence. So there you have it. Just a way to MIDI map the MPD32 to uh, the Koala sampler. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Thanks.